Is the shadow.tech service worth it? No paid promotion, no sponsorship, no affiliate links, no bull. I'm in the middle of moving, so please excuse this studio here. It's not exactly attractive. Anyway, if you're new here, I'm Daniel, and we're into getting the most out of our computers around here. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell down there so you don't miss anything. We also have a Discord server that is pretty much dead, and we could really use your help getting it going. The link is in the description if that's something that you think you could help with. So for those of you that don't know, Shadow is marketed as a cloud gaming platform, but what it really is is a powerful Windows 10 virtual machine that's hosted in the cloud. It's not like Stadia or GeForce Now where you have a predefined library of games to choose from, it's a full-on Windows desktop. So first things first, let's talk about pricing and plans. As of right now, there's three plans that are available, or at least will become available eventually. The first one being Boost, which is what I'm subscribed to, and that'll get you four Xeon cores, 12 gigs of RAM, and the equivalent of a GTX 1080 for 14 bucks a month. And in the summer of 2020, you'll be able to scale that all the way up to the infinite package, which will run you a solid 50 bucks a month. That being said, if you sign up right now for Boost, you'll still have to wait until almost the end of July to actually use your machine. Availability has been an issue since I started using the service almost a year ago, and when I signed my son up for it as a Christmas gift, there was no mention of a wait like there is now, but it wasn't until the end of January when it was actually activated, so we had to wait almost an entire month to use it, which was, which was a bummer. Um, so it is nice to see that they're being more upfront with the wait times now. So after your machine is activated, interacting with it is pretty straightforward. Once you start it up, you get presented with your machine's desktop and you install and play games the same way you would on a regular PC. This means that it literally supports any game that is compatible with Windows 10. Furthermore, and this is what I primarily use it for, it supports any software that runs on Windows 10. I almost exclusively edit my videos on my Shadow PC. Premiere and After Effects run incredibly smooth and wildly increases my productivity. It's nice to be able to have the media encoder rendering my video, which is incredibly CPU intensive, and I can just minimize Shadow and let it run in the background without it dragging anything else that I want to do on the computer to a screeching halt. The games also look great. Rarely have I seen any sort of artifacts that I would consider detrimental. On occasion it has been noticeable, but it's been nothing more than a minor inconvenience that's cleared up quickly, and it's usually my fault because I'm downloading something in the background and eating up bandwidth, or my wife is watching Netflix, or my son is downstairs playing on his shadow machine. I tried recording a demo for you guys, but um, YouTube is going to completely ruin it anyway, so I'm not even going to show it because the compression from YouTube would make the whole demonstration move. So moving on, the settings are all pretty straightforward and the defaults will probably work for 99% of people. If you're going to use any USB peripherals, you just have to install the USB driver, which was completely painless. Just simply click the install drivers button and once the drivers are installed, you can just tick off the devices you want to forward off to your shadow machine while you're running it. Shadow also has built-in controller support, which is pretty awesome. I haven't tested it thoroughly, I don't really use a controller when I play games, but I did plug in my PlayStation controller and it automatically detected it. And it'll automatically detect any of the controllers that you have plugged in and it'll pass it through to your Shadow PC automatically. Additionally, they have support for spoofing your PlayStation controller, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, I usually have to use a third party tool, but with Shadow I didn't have to. As for the network connection, there's really nothing I can complain about. A solid gigabit connection down and 100 megs up. I don't really know what more you could possibly need. You can see here I install this game that's just under a gig in size in a few seconds. So, Storage was one of my biggest complaints using Shadow in the past. Some games like Modern Warfare are a whopping 180 gig download. But they have addressed that and added the option to increase your storage for a fee. It took a while for me to get it because availability is limited, but I eventually did and it's a fair price in my opinion at only $299 for an additional 250 gigs of space. My main worry was always going to be input lag, and it has been an issue at times 
This is directly correlated to your latency to the shadow data center, however, and there's a lot of things that influence it. I have a 100 megabit per second connection at my house. I'm relatively close to the Chicago data center and my computer is hardwired. But I have noticed that if both me and my son are running shadow at the same time, plus others in the house streaming video, my latency has a ten tendency to increase naturally. Even at its worst though, the input lag is minimal. It's probably noticeable for super competitive players or for games that require super fast reaction times, but for me, chipping away at a video project or something like that, it's never been an issue. I honestly had a hard time coming up with cons to add to this video. Some things I'd like to see in the future maybe would be support for multiple monitors, an implementation like TeamViewer where you have multiple windows that you can drag to your monitors would be pretty great, but I can see how it wouldn't be a priority as this mainly is targeted at running a game in full screen and you wouldn't need multiple monitors for that. The only other big issue I've had has been availability and I don't really think there's anything anyone can do about that. They can only grow as fast as they can grow and at least they're being upfront and honest before you sign up now, which I think is fantastic. So overall, the games look great, they play smoothly, there used to be somewhat frequent outages, but that's been resolved and is no longer an issue. Storage used to be limited, but they took care of that. I think the company really listens to its users and is providing a useful service for a fair price. There's not really much negative that I can say about them. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, I'd happily answer them in the comments or on Discord. But until next time, peace.